Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my review of the TT Artisan 11mm f2.8 fisheye lens. Now, obviously, fisheye lenses are a little bit more of niche style lenses. In fact, this is the first one that I've actually ever spent much time with. Uh, it's not necessarily a style of photography that I'm naturally drawn to, and it's a little bit ironic in that most of the time I'm talking about the importance of minimal amounts of distortion as part of doing a lens review. But in reality, using a fisheye lens is all about embracing the distortion. And in fact, it requires a type of photography that rather than trying to minimize uh, distortion, it's really about emphasizing the distortion and using that to maximal effect. Now, it is a little bit more of a challenging aspect of photography, and I certainly wouldn't recommend a fisheye lens as someone's first lens. Um, it really takes a little bit more experience, and it doesn't take long to look at photos taken with fisheye lens to see that there are people that often don't use them very well, to be honest. But... Uh, I believe at the same time, you can really get some amazing photos, unique photos, obviously, with a fisheye lens. Now, to this point, there really have not been any lenses like this on mirrorless, anything that's quite this wide, and, uh, and then also of this kind of quality. A lot of fisheye lenses, because they are more niche products, tend to be really bargain type lenses and so they're not necessarily amazing optically they're not necessarily all that great in terms of their build the uh, tt artisan although this is a new kind of you know boutique brand that i'm not previously familiar with they've really put out quite a mature product here. Now, I'll start off by noting that this is all manual focus. It is, it's manual focus, manual aperture ring, and so no electronics involved here. However, in this case, that maybe isn't as huge a deal as it might be in other situations, and we'll, we'll explore why here in just a moment. And so, uh, first of all, let's take a closer look at the overall build and design, because this is actually a really beautifully made lens. And, and certainly one worth taking a look at. First of all, it comes in something akin to like a watch presentation case. And so that's the way that it'll actually arrive to you. And so actually uh, kind of nice, different, better packaging than what I see on some lenses. And beyond that, you can see that this is actually a really nicely made lens. Everything is metal and glass, and the lens hood itself is metal. And so it attaches both via suction, but then also you, there's a little bit of compression that takes place there. There is like a, um, a felt that has a little bit of spring to it in there that helps to suck everything on. Now, obviously you have a bulbous rounded front element, and so you are gonna have to work to keep that clean. There is a little bit of a built-in lens hood that helps to protect it from bumps, but you know there is certainly some vulnerability there, but so far no uh, major issues for myself on that. Focus ring here is nicely damped, uh, moves nice and smooth. You can see the focus throw is not particularly long. It's uh, basically about 90 degrees and um, 90 to 100 degrees there. But it, you don't actually need a lot of focus throw here for the simple reason that, uh, you know, put somewhere about here, everything is going to be in focus. I mean, 11 millimeters is super wide on a full frame camera. And then of course, the nature of the fisheye means that it's a lot is going to be in focus at any time. So really the only time you have to play with focus is actually when you're, when you're up close to a subject. And so you can focus down really closely, actually. You can focus down to um, 17 centimeters, and so very, very close, uh, a little under half a foot, or a little over half a foot, I should say. And, um, and so at that focus distance, you do get quite a bit of magnification. However, your image quality is gonna be much better if you compose in the center. Now, the other thing here is that the aperture ring, it's a manual aperture ring, but it is a declicked aperture ring and it moves really, really good. I mean, this is, this is actually one of the better feeling aperture rings that I've used. It's just really, really smooth. It's, it's heavily damped, but nicely damped. And so it's, it's actually what you would want and that it's not hard to make changes, but there's enough weight there. It's not gonna inadvertently change on you. Everything is designed around a metal mount here. So as far as the mounts go, this is E-mount for uh, Sony. You can also get it in Leica mounts. And there is now, there is available Nikon Z and um, Canon R or RF mount 
options there as well. Now, for some reason, the price does vary on this lens. And so, for example, for Sony, Nikon, and Canon, it's relatively inexpensive, about 215 US dollars. You can get it from Pergear here, for example. If you go with the Leica M mount, for whatever reason, the price jumps up to like the $350 range. I don't actually know the, the cause of that. I do think that there is a, I've read that there is a maybe an optical accessory that comes with it that may account for, uh, that pr probably helps you to visualize focus. And that is maybe an additional accessory that comes with it. But I mean, really for the build quality of this lens, it is actually, it's, it's, that's a great price uh, for a lens that's made this well. So in terms of the basic specs here, the lens is 78 millimeters in diameter, 67 millimeters um, in length, and it weighs in at 439 grams, optical formula, 11 elements in seven groups, and there are seven aperture blades inside. So as you can see, it is nicely compact, but yet this is a seriously nicely built lens. And in fact, I mean, it's there's not a whole lot here that would set it apart from, you know, when I was reviewing, you know, Zeiss lenses that cost a whole lot more than this, <laughs> you know, five, six times what this lens uh, retails for. And so it has a similar degree of build in many ways. Um, and so certainly there's, I don't have any really complaints about the overall build. I mean, everything works really nice. It's very nicely damped. And so, you know, as always typical complaints, you know, I would love to see electronics. It does make a difference. Um, but even when it comes to this, it's not as huge a deal because it's going to be pretty easy to identify this particular lens apart from other lenses you use because the images are going to look really, really unique from it. And some, so in some ways, the sorting issue is less of an issue. And so, I mean, but that, that's room for growth for the future, I think, to incorporate some electronics into the design, to transmit XF data, to just make it a little bit simpler to use. And certainly if you wanted to use any kind of, um, any kind of profile or anything like that, that. All of that is certainly sped along by having electronics as a part of the design. And then of course, you know, um, a fisheye lens a lot of times will be used outdoors. So weather sealing is another potential area of improvement when it comes to the build. So as already noted, it is a manual focus only lens. The manual focus throw is not particular long and it's probably because it doesn't need to be. Such a wide focal length means that there are only so many focus possibilities. In many situations, you're gonna be able to set your, your focus and pretty much leave it. Um, and so with a, such a wide focal length, everything is pretty much gonna be in focus. And so that's one of the advantages of a lens like this. As far as manual focus goes, it's not all that hard to use because you just need to set what you wanna be in focus and then mostly just go ahead and shoot with it. And so the only time that that changes is when you want to focus on something quite a bit closer and you want to prioritize that at a wider aperture. But outside of that, it's, it's a simple lens to use uh, when it comes to focus. So how about image quality? Now, I will give one caveat in that, uh, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, a lot of the places where it's logical to shoot with the fisheye lens, shooting interiors, um, architecture, is something in cities that is uh, quite uh, common, popular to do with fisheye lenses, just to give that, use that distortion in a unique way. And so um, unfortunately, all of those kind of venues have been off limits to me during this time due to being shut down. And so uh, I'm a man of the woods. And so you're going to get a lot of woods type shots as a part of this. But I believe I can probably demonstrate the points that I want to make pretty ably despite that. And I've got some photos that I'm proud of that I'll share with you as a part of this. So let's jump in and let's take a look at the image quality. So first of all, you're going to find that trying to do traditional test is somewhat pointless here. And so as you can see, um, the whole idea of the fisheye is that there is a tremendous amount of curvature. You can also see that at very close distances, there is a lot in the frame at 11 millimeters. I couldn't even square up the chart without getting a lamp that was outside. So, I mean, anyway, and here also you can see that trying to test on a flat surface at a close focus distance is nearly impossible. We've got good image sharpness in the middle of the frame, but everything else is completely out of focus due to the field curvature. That being said, there's actually a lot of good things to report here optically. Uh, the lens is actually really, really sharp in the center of the frame, delivering, as you can see, really, really good detail. Mid-frame is still very good. 
And even off towards the edge of the frame, um, image quality is actually still quite good. You can see some lateral chromatic aberration. We'll come back to in just a second here. But uh, even at f2.8, um, center of the frame and mid frame is good with corners lagging behind. By f4, the corners start to sharpen up. So this lens actually exceeded my expectations optically. So you have a few options in how you're going to deal with the fisheye effect. You can use you know, a profile to start to straighten up the lines. You're gonna lose a little bit of the frame, but you can also go to the extreme of uh, you know, doing a full correction to where you straighten everything up. So it's pretty compelling if you're going to crop out the edges of the frame, but I mean, really you need to kind of embrace the distortion if you're gonna use this lens. So as noted, there is a fair bit of lateral chromatic aberration, as you can see here. This is after the one-click correction in Lightroom. It's not completely gone. You could probably clean it up a little bit more with an eyedropper, but it's probably cleared out to the place to where it's not a significant factor for images, certainly not like that any longer. Now, interestingly, um, longitudinal chromatic aberrations are actually really well corrected for. And so as you can see, there is a surprising amount of contrast here. It's really, um, really sharp and uh, so good contrast. And you can also see that there's not really any evidence of uh, either purple or green fringing uh, before and beyond the plane of focus. So as noted, uh, because of COVID, I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to shoot architecture. Fortunately, I was able to shoot this amazing tower here. And so even at f2.8, you can see that there is really good sharpness in the image. Um, and so in good detail here um, throughout this massive, massive tower that I discovered. You can also focus down quite closely. And so as you can see, we've got good um, amount of a reasonable amount of magnification here. Here as we get towards the um, edge of the frame, it's not going to be optimal for exposure. It's that field curvature issue. And so, um, you know, kind of composing here, I've moved it a little bit further into the frame. And so here I've actually got a good amount of detail, although there is a little bit of a blur type effect that's due to the distortion. You can see that there's a narrow plane of sharpness there that's good. But again, this is more about using it creatively. This is not a macro lens, but you can use it like this to purposefully stretch things and to be creative with your composition. So let's explore that creativity for a moment. And so here out for a hike before everything was a kind of clearing up. And so you can see that um, really good resolution in the center of the frame, but you know, just kind of that creative use of the um, curvature here, just around the house, you can see again, just creatively using that. Now here I've composed in a more traditional fashion. And so as you can see, there's not nearly as much kind of craziness going on. Another popular application for fisheye is in shooting interiors. Obviously you can get at 11 millimeters, you can get a huge amount of information in the frame. And as long as you're not, you know, this is not architecture uh, photography here, but it is something that does appeal to a lot of people. Another uh, good application of fisheye is to look up. And so in this case, I've used trees. And so you can see it, you're kind of emphasizing that leaning effect anyway, but using it in a cool way. Here's another shot. I actually really like this one here. And you can do the same kind of thing with architecture and buildings as well. Now here in a more straight on shot, you can see that I've used that fisheye effect to create that lean. And you know, it has a, it has a certain charm to it. In this case, I actually got right up next to the trunk of this tall pine tree and just kind of use that to the benefit. I shot another shot with uh, in the exact same position with a 50 millimeter uh, lens and the effect is not nearly as intriguing. This is actually a fun image. Now this in particular is I think making good use of something like this, really utilizing that distortion. And by the way, you can see how good the sharpness is in this area and here chromatic aberrations really well controlled. But there is a fun shot that kind of emphasizes that. Here's another uh, using this old vintage dump truck and you can see the end result of that is something that I actually think is really cool. Also, I point out here that colors are quite nice from the lens as well. Here's yet another, you know, kind of more woodsy type traditional thing, but using that lean to, to a positive effect. 
Now you can use the lens for portraits, kind of creative portraits. Here I put the subject right in the middle of the frame. I wanted to highlight one other thing here. You can see that there's a bit of noise because I've had to raise exposure because what does tend to happen if you're not careful in certain environments is that it's easy to get underexposed images. That's because so much is in the frame that you have to change your metering to accommodate the fact of you know, more of a center weighted if you're wanting to, wherever you're going to focus. Because if you're kind of evaluating the whole frame, there's a good chance that your the total light is going to end up with a, an underexposure of where you want it. Here's another use of this where I got, actually got right up next to this. It seems like it's a, a ways away. That's because of the, such a wide focal length. But you can see here again, actually really good color and really good sharpness here in the area that's in focus. So finally, let's talk about flare resistance. And so um, as you can see in this shot, where the, where the sun is near the middle of the frame, flare is not too bad. I've got a ghosting artifact up here, but you can see the contrast is held up really, really well. And the end result is actually an image that I think is, is really great. You can also see a little bit of the sunburst effect. It's not amazingly defined. Um, it's, it's not the greatest that you're going to find, but I mean, it does do the trick in some situations. Here's another example here where it's, you can see that the blades are not really all that well defined. So sun coming through really brightly here. So you can see a little bit of ghosting artifacts, but again, not bad when you consider how much is in the frame. However, if you have the sun right out of the frame, you're going to see more of a kind of a stronger effect here. And so you can see some ghosting artifacts and this is probably the most damaging thing that we've seen. You can see a miniature one of these in the reflection here. And so again, it's gonna be about where you put the sun in terms of the, the, um, the whole composition. At the same time, because the image is so huge, um, just so much is in the frame, you also don't see these kinds of effects as badly. So I'll have to confess that this lens actually surprised me. I mean, a lens with such incredible distortion and such a wide angle of view. I didn't really actually have high expectations of it being particularly sharp at f2.8. Surprisingly, however, both in the, the center of the frame and mid, and mid frame, it is very strong even at f2.8. And corners sharpen the rest of the way up, f4 to f5.6, making this a really uh, surprisingly useful lens. And so I would say, uh, you know, this is a lens that I actually wouldn't mind hanging on to for the rare occasions when I want to reach for a fisheye perspective because it is, it is easy to bring along, it's compact, but it's also really optically sound. And so it's not priced as cheaply as what the cheap options are out there. I mean, you can find plenty of fisheye lenses for $200 or less. This is a bit more expensive, but it's also a much more serious optical instrument. It's also built to much more exacting standards than those cheap options are. And so I think it, if you're interested in what you can do with a fisheye lens, this is actually a very interesting option. The fact that it is designed for full frame uh, mirrorless cameras, I'm testing on some, you know, to have that option in a lens that's compact, reasonably sized, and so optically good is actually, to me, a, a lot of goodness that's going on there. So I think it's worthy of your consideration if you're looking for a fisheye lens in particular. I'm Dustin Abbott. I thank you for watching today. If you look in the description down below, there is a linkage both to an image gallery, also linkage there to uh, purchase one if you would like to shop for one for yourself. Beyond that, there are also linkage to follow me on social media, um, to sign up for my newsletter or become a patron. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.